In the early days of our republic, the United States made a choice about its relationship with Latin America. President James Monroe, who was also a former Secretary of State, declared that the United States would unilaterally, and as a matter of fact, act as the protector of the region. The doctrine that bears his name asserted our authority to step in and oppose the influence of European powers in Latin America. And throughout our nation's history, successive presidents have reinforced that doctrine and made a similar choice. Today, however, we have made a different choice. The era of the Monroe Doctrine is over. The relationship, that's worth applauding, that's not a bad thing. <laughs>
and it went from preventing European influence to preventing Soviet and communist influence. In 1954, John Doles invoked the Monroe Doctrine to denounce Soviet influence in Guatemala and justify CIA action there. John F. Kennedy also invoked the doctrine in the Cuban Missile Crisis. Mr. President, sir, would you tell us what the Monroe Doctrine means to you today in the light of world conditions and in Cuba? The Monroe Doctrine means uh, what it has meant uh, since the uh, President Monroe and uh, John Quincy Adams uh, enunciated. And that is that uh, we would uh, oppose the uh, a foreign uh, power extending its uh, power to, uh, to the uh, Western Hemisphere. And that's why we oppose what is, being, is happening in uh, Cuba today. That's why we have cut off our trade. That's why we've worked uh, in the OAS and uh, in other ways to uh, isolate uh, the communist uh, menace in Cuba. That's why we will continue to uh, uh, give uh, a good deal of our effort and attention to it. Economics plays a big role in the history of the modern reduction. The original reason Britain supported the Monroe Reduction was because of economics, because they wanted more markets for their goods. Politicians and businessmen in America also supported the doctrine because they wanted the markets and be able to expand economically across the Americas. The reason there was a resurgence in European interest in Latin America in the early 1900s because of the large debts the Latin American nations had required. President William Howard Taft believed that America should use its economy to protect Latin America from European influence. While Teddy Roosevelt's successor, William Howard Taft, continued parts of Roosevelt's big stick diplomacy. He developed his own efforts to try and improve the relationship between the United States and Central America and the world called dollar diplomacy. This policy encouraged American businesses to invest in various countries in an effort to convince those governments to be friendlier to the United States. Taft, who had been elected in 1908, believed that once those countries had received American investment, realized the benefits of those investments, they would want to make sure that American businesses stayed. Taft's problem was that his program was no more well received than Roosevelt's big stick diplomacy. He tried to take control of Honduras by buying up their debt to British bankers. In Nicaragua and Haiti, similar plans also failed. Unfortunately, government and businesses working together can lead to bad results. Often, when the government supported the businesses in Latin America, the corporation would actually take over the country they were in. Now this was an instance uh, wherein a large company and the government worked together toward a common goal, which was, of course, to overthrow the democratically elected Jacob Arbenz Guzman, because he wasn't playing ball with the corporate interests that UFC represented and controlled. Now, at the time, it's safe to say that Guatemala was indeed a banana republic. The UFC owned more than 40% of the arable land. They controlled the post office. They controlled the railroad. And of course, they controlled the banana trade. Socially, at first, the Monroe Doctrine meant to the Americans that they were the records of liberty, justice, in Central and South America from European expansion. However, the definition changed over time. In the later 1800s, the Monroe Doctrine meant that the Americans, that they were the protectors of liberty and justice from European expansion so that America could expand its own influence there. Since America was regional power, Americans believed they had a duty to protect the little nations of the Americas. America should be policemen and control the actions of Latin America. So, we quickly come to an inescapable conclusion. The United States is the world's policeman because there is no alternative, and everybody knows it. But what if Americans don't want the job anymore? What if the cop walked off the beat? The answer is clear and well-grounded both in history and current events. When America retreats, the bad guys advance. Unfortunately, this led to an enterprise known as filibustering, where ambitious Americans tried to expand their own influence in the name of America by force. Mercenaries such as William Walker and William A. Chandler attempted to nearly succeed in taking control over Latin America. The American public often enjoyed reading about the adventures of filibusters. Monroe went and put together a statement That told the Europeans to stay out of the Americas The rest of the world started to disagree But were afraid of the British Navy And therefore no one went and tried to challenge the doctrine but we're gonna have to cut you off 
future colonization of our land and of our neighbors. You mess with them, you mess with us, but we have the British Navy and no rough We'll stay out of your way too, because our government just don't know how to get along. So you better get out of here. That is the main reason that we wrote this song. Among our doctrines, one of the most important parts of American foreign policy for the past 200 years. However, there is debate on whether it was truly about preventing European influence for reaching Latin America, or whether it was to allow America to expand undisturbed. There is also a debate on whether the Monroe Doctrine is truly dead, or whether we need it now more than ever. That's up for you to decide. Thanks for watching. Have a Benjamin Day. America! <laughs> In our basements, when we were little kids, drawing murals on the pavement. When getting hurt, meant a bump or a bruise. When sticks is gun, we're the 